Hey everyone, welcome to Buzzing About Romance, a quick shot of romance. I am Becky, and on this episode, I am joined by Leah. Hi, Leah. Hi, Becky. Um, so I'm super excited to talk about this with you because I do love this series. I love this series so much, and I love the author, and it's just... It's one of the few traditional pubbed books yeah. that I pre-order uh -huh. and trust that it is going to be worthwhile reading. Yeah, 100%. So on this episode of A Quick Shot of Romance, we are reviewing Bayou Beloved. This is book six in the Butterfly Bayou series by author Lexi Blake. And you can find the synopsis in our on-the-shelf show notes. Uh, Leah, give us all the book goods. Okay, so this book was released March 28th, 2023. So it is brand new. The tropes are small town, childhood crush, close proximity roommates kind of co-workers kind of not and opposites attract and it is in the butterfly bayou series but it is a series of standalones like you can pick this one up on its own and have not read the first five books and you'll be fine and it is told in dual third person point of view and the put out percentage is 49 percent, which is pretty typical for like a slow burn slowish burn trad pub book i think lexi always writes in third person dual point of view she does yes yeah. Um, so I love Lexi Blake. I think mm -hmm. her book's really sexy. If you've been paying attention, we did her co-author series, The Perfect Gentleman. Um, oh, that was an experiment of chaos and delight. <laughs> Leah likes the Masters and Mercenaries series. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I have read her. She writes a series of Menage, a whole town of Menage. Oh, yes. As Sophie Oak. As Sophie Oak, which those is her Bliss Colorado series. Mm -hmm. And I really like those. Butterfly Bayou is different than all of it those. Is, it is very different. But she, one thing I really enjoy about her series, though, like her Trad Pub series of Butterfly Bayou, but her masters, they are all interconnected in some way because they're, um, they're Gidries from like Remy, who owns the one restaurant. He first showed up in the Masters of Mercenary series. Like Jaina, who is the heroine of the book, actually goes to Dallas for an interview at one point in the book. And she interviews with Mitch, who is a big part of the Masters of Mercenary series, who is married to Laurel, who is the heroine from book one's sister. So there's a lot of interconnected pieces, but you do not have to read all of these books because Lexi Blake, she introduces these like characters in such a way that like, you don't need to know what books they came from or anything like that. And I just really love that she connects like all her worlds together. The one thing I will say about this book compared to previous Butterfly Bayou books, mm -hmm. I felt like this book was kind of the completion of the first half but the start of the second half but the start of the second half of the mm -hmm. series but it it tie it ties them together and one i really enjoyed this book and the way it's written but the the romance of quaid who is our hero and the heroine almost takes second fiddle to a lot of the growth and change of some of the other characters that are introduced in this book so i feel like all of the bayou butterfly bayou books are very character heavy mm -hmm. they are. They, and they're contemporary but they have this romantic comedy elements yeah and this one, because of the enemies to lovers vibes between the two of these people, mm -hmm. it has much more of the romantic comedy yeah. than it did just straight contemporary romance. So mm -hmm. it pushed forward this rom-com and the rom-com happening were not, typically we get little pieces of rom-com. Previous yeah. books, it's Otis, the... um alligator alligator or the pan uh, the trash panda pandemonium you know and in this book there were they talked about otis but there were no otis sightings and they talked about brian the raccoon but there were no brian the raccoon sightings although at the end of the book there is brian the raccoon like saving yeah so. yeah zep has to save him because gina is gonna sue him yeah She's going to lay down the law because the nieces are very upset about the treatment of Brian the raccoon. So let's talk about Quaid Hav Havery, Harvey, whatever his name. 
Havery. Havery. So Quaid is one from one of the wealthiest families of Papillion, the small town, which is a character in itself in this entire series. And he is the town lawyer. His dad was a lawyer. He is the lawyer. And it's one of those things that you, as you read this book, like if you've read the series, you kind of don't. But as you read this book, you really find that like the tradition is very strong in this town. Like the doctor, I mean, Lila's not... She was not from this area, but like typically whoever owns the company, like it is passed down generation to generation. Well, you even see that. So both Gina and Quaid are lawyers. Yes, they are. And you see like how steeped in tradition and family and always will be slow Southern style in the courtroom. So because you have the judge... Who just really wants to go fish. He wants to go fishing on Fridays, like, yeah. and he's stuck in court. Yeah. Um, and his daughter is the court, or his granddaughter, granddaughter is the court reporter. Yeah. And they're just casually waiting for Quaid to show up for this court date where he's supposed to be against Jaina. Yeah. And while they wait for him, they play hangman. Yeah. Which, a Southern judge playing hangman? Nobody yeah. else caught the irony of that. <laughs> oh, I did. I laughed really hard when I saw that. So let's talk about Jaina because she's she's a really dynamic character. She is. And I almost felt like this book was more about her awakening, her mm-hmm. acceptance that we're turning home and realizing, well, things might have not been perfect when you were younger. Home is still home. Yeah. So Jaina is returning home after 10 years her, with her tail kind of between her legs. So kinda. she <laughs> kind of, well, it, not all of it is her own doing. So she went to like, went to college, went to law school. She was working in new Orleans. So she is not far, like super far away, a few hours. Um, so she had a case where she felt that her client was doing wrong and she turned him in. And so then she proceeds to get basically is having to be um, investigated to see if she is doing something wrong, but she, she was right. But during this whole upheaval, she gets a divorce from her cheating spouse who she never loved. And so she comes home like broke and floundering yeah and she doesn't want to be home no she does not because like she, her goal in life was to leave the town like from the time she was 14 15 and understood class and division yeah. and her family's role in the town which was in the trailer park the poor girls she, her mother has worked at the factory yeah. for her whole adult life her sister stayed in the town has two daughters by two different men and works as a waitress at the local diner and never will be more lives in the trailer across the street, across the yard from mom. Gina doesn't want any of this. She Mm -hmm. wanted more. And so when she was 18, she basically packed her bags and said, see ya. Yeah. I'm going on my own way. And she worked really hard to achieve her dreams. She, she did. And I, but I think part of it too, is like her mom, like her mom was so set in her ways. Like, this is the best that I can be like working in this factory. Like that's the best I can be like, don't, don't have dreams. And I think a big part of Jaina's issues with the town or the fact that like her mom was unbending in the fact that like she could have been more, her mom is very set in her ways and they, they clash a little bit because Jaina is this very intelligent what well, like she was a very intelligent girl, very intelligent woman who wanted more for herself. She didn't want to be stuck in the same cycle. And so that, I think that was a big part of it too. If she had a different support system growing up, she would not have been so adamant to get out of there. But I think her mom looked at her desire to, be to leave the town to move away as a rejection yeah 
that she did everything that her mother Lissa had done was not good enough. Yeah. And that and Jaina didn't come back to Papillon. She no. had the family come visit her. She paid for them to come to New Orleans. Yeah. Because there was nothing good for her. And in the course of her having to return, she returns with her beautiful floofy Great Pyrenees Luna. Uh-huh. And I I had a Great Pyrenees. He was the love of my life. Um, and so I just loved Luna because seriously, the dogs really do like they cling to you or they lay in the bed and just stare at you and sleep. <laughs> like that well, is all great parents do. But that's been one theme throughout this whole series too, is like the companion of a pet. Like, yes, like Zep, he has this trash panda pandemonium, like chaos, like it's, there's a lot of animal love in these books and like the love an animal and like how the animals like can bring these two people together because like Luna, like she attaches herself to Quaid and like they, they really do forge like a good friendship. But, and I think part of the Jaina's thing too, is like, she was that studious nerdy girl in high school. And so she didn't have a lot of friends. She was shy. She was the poor girl from the trailer park. And so she, so she wanted to prove to these people that she went to school with that she was capable of more as well. And she always had a crush on Quaid, but when she sees him again, he can't remember her name. Yeah, he doesn't remember who she was. And she tutored him in French. Yeah. And so she, and that's where like the enemies to lovers really comes in because she's annoyed. Well, it comes <clears throat> in because one of the great things throughout this entire story is they are adversaries against each other in court because Quaid's the town yeah. lawyer. He's the only lawyer in town. If there's something happening and they have to leave and go to the next town, the next parish to hire a second lawyer. And Quaid's a busy guy. The town's not tiny, but you know, there's town business, there's, um, you know, wills and family drama and business. Yeah. And he does a ton for his friends that own the, big uh the factory in town yeah um, well, he, well and he does that's renee. the thing like he is it's renee yeah renee but he does all of the lawyering for the whole town and so it's like he is the like he mo moderates discussions he like facilitates things like he like that's the reason he is late to court because he's talking to a brother and a sister about their their mother's will and these really ugly, creepy, haunted dolls. And, and the who's going to take and the dolls? Cats. And the cats. And the they cats. They can't split the cats up. But they and they can't split the dolls up. Like there's like four dolls, but you can't split them. They have to stay together. <laughs> but it's like he's facilitating this conversation because. And and that's something too. Like he understands how the town works and the slow pace of it. And so like. Jaina comes back in as like gung ho, full force. Like we're gonna make things change, and, and she takes ensues. up a she takes up a court case that is throughout the whole book. That is, um, two neighbors. Geraldine yeah. Oliver owns a house that her backyard station butts up to the Last Chance gas station. Yeah, and that is owned by Mister Abbott. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Ab, there was a tree, a large old tree between the properties that that was cut down. Mr. Abbott cut down, and the the book starts that they're in court because Jaina is saying that on Geraldine's behalf the tree was cut down without permission, and Mr. Abbott is repped by Quaid. Yeah, and then. But then things change. They settle because, down. They but then, things settle. But then Geraldine is having naked parties in her backyard. She's having naked hot tub parties in her backyard. Um, and it is everybody in the gas station when they pull up to get gas can see her old people naked hot tub parties. And everybody wants her to stop, including yeah. the judge. Yeah. Because he went to buy bait because the last get chance but, gas but stop has the best. Go it, he can't get the best bait because he witnesses the naked geriatric parties. And the fence at the um, 
there's, you know, some city ordinances about the height of the fence and her house is up kind of on an incline. <laughs> so we don't get trash panda pandemonium. We get like elderly pandemonium. Elderly like, naked that's... hot tub parties. That. That whole storyline is just really funny, but like the conviction that Jaina has, like in the fact that she's like, I can do this, but, but there's a big part like with Quaid's relationship with his, his mom and his brother and his brother has like, he's been like a troubled kid. Like he has a drug problem. He lives out in California. Like his mom is a snob. An old Southern snob. She's this old Southern snob, but there's so much growth in Paul, the brother, and the mom, and Jaina's sister, Sienna. 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 I was thinking the one of the old other books, it was Sierra, I think. Well, and I like, so I really did like, like, Sienna's introduction yeah. Paul's introduction. Yeah. We also, at the end of the previous book, one of the Sheriff's deputies has moved away because his, his HEA was a movie star. Yeah. Um, so he's on a indefinite leave of absence and there's a new um there's a new deputy in there's town. There's a new deputy in town who is slightly who, attracted. Who has a little thing for the uh the sister for but Sienna she wants and, nothing to do with him. Yeah, she's like not interested. And I really liked this is definitely a great example of the small town itself is a character in this story because like Jaina sets up her law office before she starts sharing office space with Kate Quaid in the back booth in the diner mm -hmm. and starts accepting clients and drinking coffee. <laughs> yeah. And it's just... that's one thing too, is like, she's not getting paid money for a lot of these things. She's going on like a bartering system and like she is doing the work for the gas station on a bartering system that her nieces who are adorable are getting like slushies and pretzels and once like a week. bags of chips once a week. Yeah. And it's like she gets a discounted gas or so many Phillips per month. But that's or... the thing too. Like it really shows like the character of the small town that like they barter and they create this like environment that you really wish was real. And like, you just want to go visit Papillon. Yeah. And we get to go to Gidry's for uh -huh. a night out with yeah. great food and dancing and well, small town and, gossip. And in that too, like that scene, they talk about how like, there's a, like, there's a place set outside for the kids and how like, if they were in New Orleans, like nobody would like that, let that happen. But like, they don't even... I mean, they pay attention to the kids, but they don't pay attention to the kids because they feel safe. Like there's this safeness to this town. And, but they talk about how they had to put a fence around it because Otis was getting too close. And so yeah. for safety reasons, like they needed a fence in the playground. So Otis didn't attack any of the kids, but it's one of those, it's one of those books and series that you just fall in love with the town. And honestly, like I could just read about the town and the people in the town like i don't need a i don't need a romance like I, it's second so nature to this town for I me i do think that this is a book that if you are just dipping your toes into a little spicier yeah romance yeah. romantic fiction and you're coming yeah. over from genre fiction with romantic elements this is a great jump over it is. It really is. Because it's not women's fiction. It is definitely romance. It has that romance. It has that AGA. It gives you everything you want. But it's not so in your face that it's over the top. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I think you should read it. You should read this whole series. This series is by Berkeley and it tends to be in lots of libraries. I know it is on Hoopla. The audiobooks are over there and they're really well done. So um, I highly recommend this series. Yes, 100%. So good. And it's Lexi Blake. And you can't really go wrong with a Lexi Blake book. No, you can't. Um, Leah, thank you so much for joining me for this quick shot of romance. Always. I'm always willing to talk books with you. Until next time, everyone. Happy reading, everybody. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes.